This has become a very, uh, well, it, it was basically the, uh, the game of choice during lockdown. One of my favorite albums from the 90s. It is actually signed by Ron James Dio. Look at how cute we were. Hey there, I'm Katie Darrell, and joining me today is Lizzie Hale from Hailstorm and also from Access TV's very own A Year in Music. Thanks for being here. Woo, thank you so much for having me. This is so much fun, and it's it's great to see your face. And I love that you have an Aerosmith t-shirt because I wore my Metallica t-shirt today. So there we go. We're just representing all the way rock. around. <laughs> well, a game I like to play with some of my guests is called Rock and Tell. This is like show and tell, but with uh, awesome music memorabilia. And I feel like just your room alone is, is a half hour segment. So we're going to have to pare it down and pick some of your favorite items. Uh, item number one, what can you show off to us? Um, item number one, well, let's let's go with the, the boring stuff first. Um, <laughs> let's, oh, wait, I, no, I'm kidding. None of it is boring. Um, I actually, I have a... This is a laminate from uh, 2009. It is actually signed by Ronnie James Dio. And it says, Lizzie, Ronnie James Dio, you kick ass. And I remember when he wrote that down, he's like, is that okay? Or is that too much? <laughs> and um, and then uh, this was our, on the back of it was our is our pass from when we ended up opening up for Heaven and Hell. It would only happened once. We were um, on our way coming through uh, New Jersey trying to go home after a tour. It was their last date of that tour. And Coheed and Cambria was the opening band and they had dropped out um, for that last show. And uh, so our agent calls up, it's like, I know you're on your way through there. Do you want to open up for Dio and the Sabbath boys? I'm like, absolutely. I will cl crawl through shattered glass to do that. Um, and it was a great night. They were really sweet. So I well, kept Can you hold one. it up so we can get a, a closer look oh, yeah. at that signature? Absolutely. Beep. Try to get the glare out. Now, let me ask you this: Is, Are like when you're backstage and you're with uh, fellow rock stars, which you are? Um, is it cool to say, "Can I have your autograph"? Is there like what's the etiquette? Oh, of course, you know. And it's funny because being on both sides of it, if there's anybody that ever wants my autograph, like I, I don't, I don't think anything of it. Of course, come up and ask because the, because the worst thing that could happen is that you really want to, but then you don't get it, and then later on. You know, I hear about it online where it's like, oh, you should have just said something. It's okay. I won't bite. I mean, I maybe nibble a little bit, but I won't bite. Um, but I know what it's like to be on that other side because for some reason when I'm on the other side, even now, you know, when I'm meeting my idols, it's 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 hard for me to to ask. To, that's, a, right. that's an interesting ask, you know. But um, rule of thumb and what I've noticed with everybody is that it's always better to ask than to let it go. So, And when you are asking a fellow rocker um, – I mean, do you just randomly grab whatever's nearby, a napkin, a coaster, or do you do it with intent and have a guitar or like your lanyard? Well, n n nowadays I try to to do it with intent, like with the lanyard. The last um, autograph from one of my idols that I received uh, was actually Joan Jett. We got to open up for her um, a couple of years ago. And I have had her signature Melody Maker guitar um for forever and uh and so uh when we opened up for her um i i asked her if she could sign the, the guitar and i was so i i was so nervous and i'm like we'd already done the set like we were already like talking about the weather but like asking her to sign the and then she she was kind of screwing with me too because she's like she's like oh i don't sign guitars and and i automatically was like well well, that's okay. And she's like, no, I'm screwing with you. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, I'll sign the guitar. So she she knew that I was a little nervous about it. Oh, uh, Joan. Yes. Joan being Joan. Oh, that, oh, that Joanie. She's just doing her thing. Um, All but, right. So, so item speaking. number two for Rock and Tell. Okay. So item number two for Rock and Tell. This, <laughs> uh, this is actually, um, this is a third place trophy uh, to the 1997 Schuylkill County Fair talent show which was actually our very first show as hailstorm um it was just my brother and i we named we named the band hailstorm on the way to the talent show um we lost to the tap dancing cowgirl who was much cuter than we were but we did get i, I found this in the attic and so that is a uh, that's one of those one of those things that's even that's just as important as the next thing i'm going to show you oh there you go yeah well we I don't know who the cowgirl was. I'm going to have to go back and like look at some VHS tapes and see, you know, where is she now? But, um, but like I said, she was much cuter than we were. We played like a five minute 
song that we had written called Love is Power, and it had a drum solo in the middle of it. It was just the two of us, just myself and my little brother. Yeah. But I keep that, I keep, I keep this I, one. I feel like we're blaming right the drum solo. <laughs> it, it was the drum solo's fault. <laughs> well, considering my drummer is also my little brother, yeah, I'll definitely, I'll, I'll take that as a big yeah. sister. But um, but this is actually, this is our Grammy that we won for uh, Best Hard Rock Slash Metal Performance in 2012. And for Love Bite, so do I. And um, it's got some fingerprints on it. It actually, fun fact, it does hold exactly three shots of tequila, just in case anybody wants to know that trickery. But um, but that was a weird time when we got nominated for the Grammy. We were in uh, Madison, Wisconsin at the time and playing a show. And it was this whole like whisper down the lane texting situation, whereas our management texted our front of house guy, our front of house guy texted our um, our guitar tech and then told my guitar player in the middle of the set when I, I kind of sat down to do like a piano ballad and um, all of a sudden my, my guitar player runs out to the to the middle of the stage and and tells me that we got nominated for Grammy and I must have looked like something happened something horrible happened like I must have had to look like oh, somebody mm -hmm. died because everybody in the audience was like wait what happened? What what went down? And I just turned to the audience and I said, well, apparently, you know, we're on the Recording Academy's radar because we just got nominated for a Grammy. And nice. you would have thought, you know, the home team hit a yeah. touchdown. It was really, it was a cool <laughs> moment. But it was, but it's strange because being in, you know, being in hard rock and being, a, you know, just a, a, a working band, it's like, you don't really think about those things. In fact, getting a Grammy when, when I was a teenager, that was the joke. It's like, oh, yeah when we win a Grammy. Sure, that was the joke. And yeah. so the fact that it came into fruition was, um, it kind of showed all of us that, okay, yes, maybe we were crazy for starting a rock band, but it wasn't a stupid idea after all, so. <laughs> Generally, um, on the day-to-day, -day, where does the Grammy reside at your home? Um, it, it migrates throughout the home, but uh, it goes from back and forth from being down here in the studio, but um, also, I have a mantle, like a normal person, like a fireplace with a mantle, kind of very similar to yours. Yeah. And I feel like I kind of, I feel like I bought the house because of the mantle. So I could just set that, <laughs> I could set all those things on, on sure. there, you know. Um, but your little, can we, little can we get a close up look at that, that, um, Grammy? Oh, of course. Absolutely. Just have to remind me of that. Oh, get the glare. Is it heavy? Is this a good, uh, weapon? It, it, it. It, it definitely could bludgeon somebody if you really so don't break into my house <laughs> you're waiting for you yeah you'll get you get a face full of grammy let's see well i i, I got out a couple things but this we got oh. time if you if there's more than one <gasps> this is a this is an alice cooper head it act, it's actually from the same company that he gets all of his guillotine heads from it was a gift to me from a, a dear DJ uh, friend of mine um, out of Kansas City. And I, I have to tell you, so he put it in a hat box to send to my house. And so of course, I don't know what this is. And I open it up and I truly like at that first glance, I'm like, is that actually a severed head? So it scared the bejesus out of me. Um, but this has become a very, uh, well, it, it was basically the, uh, the game of choice during lockdown was me and my significant other would hide this in certain spots. Like, so one time it was in the refrigerator so that I knew whoever went in for the orange juice or whatever. And uh, it started with, with him because I have a coat rack in my bedroom and that already looks like a person in the wrong light, you know? Sure. Scary in the middle of the night. And uh, so, yeah, this head has been on top of that. Scared the bejesus out of me. I scared the bejesus out of them. It's great. But um, <laughs> it's, good. it's a good tool. I don't know if I'll take it on tour for that, you know, for that particular purpose, but it's it's good around the house. Good old dead Alice. So growing <laughs> up um, as a kid, did Alice Cooper freak you out? Because a lot of people have stories of like, oh, he he creeped me out. I was freaked out. Or did, were you totally enamored? Um, I was I was a, an enamored 11 year old when I discovered Alice Cooper. And um, that same year. My family and uh, my family moved to a 20-acre farm that had just like a couple surrounding neighbors, and 
and the girl neighbors invited me to a sleepover and you i i know you know where this is going um so they basically it's like oh bring your favorite cds and so i bring love it to death by alice cooper and ronnie james dio holy diver and those girls looked at me like i was from another planet like that that was the moment that i realized i was not cool <laughs> but one of these girls I, is not like the other ones like, exactly exactly i remember coming home uh from that sleepover too and uh and my dad being like so how was it i'm like well it was fun but they did not like alice cooper at all and he's like well that's good you know i'm like well, why is that? I'm 11. Like my life is over, right? And I'm not gonna have any friends. Uh, why is that good, Dad? And Dad's like, well, they listen to their music. This now, granted, this is around '96, so it was a little weird. Like this was like TLC and you know Mariah Carey, Backstreet Boy posters. You know, it's like I'm listening sure. to Alice Cooper. But but I don't know. My dad was always like, own your weird. You know, it's like you love Alice Cooper just because you love Alice Cooper, not because you were told to love it, mm -hmm. not because it's popular right now. Um, but the best was we got to tour with Alice Cooper and I got to tell him that story. And he is so, pr you should have seen him. He was like beaming. He was so proud that <laughs> he was the reason that I discovered that I was weird. <laughs> like, yeah, That's what it is. And I can trace that now that I'm in my thirties and this is my it's become part of my mission statement in my own band. So it's a beautiful thing. The lineage thing. of weird roots back to a slumber party. Yeah. Oh my, it really does. It's terrible. Um, I, I'll, I'll just, I'll, I'm going to bring up just like one, one more thing. Cause I found a couple Please. things here. So I'll have to do this all at once. Cause they're all kind of the same thing. So I found, so before we were signed and when I was, when I was about 14, this is our first CD, my mm -hmm. brother and I look at how cute we were. So adorable. I feel like I have that oh, don't, one. You might, you might. Well, I don't know. I don't know. You can probably get it at a dollar bin somewhere. And that was the <laughs> second CD that I found. But I also found this recording of Hailstorm. It's the first time that the the that uh, my bass player Josh, Joe, myself, and my little brother um, started jamming in my parents' basement. So it's like I have a cassette tape of all of us practicing for the first time together. And I'm like, whoa, now I just need a Walkman so I can see if it actually, oh, no, I haven't no, no. listened to it A nice years. boom box. You gotta show off your guns oh, while carrying okay. it, right? That's actually a much better idea. I agree. Santa's <laughs> listening. <box> is. <laughs> can you imagine? I'm like, Lizzie, what do you want for Christmas? I want a boom box. What? <laughs> Where do you and even get, point... I mean, I suppose Amazon, right? <laughs> exactly, exactly. Uh, well, thank you so much for sharing all these great items. No uh, Rock and Tell is always so fun and unique. Um, Lizzie Hale, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Hey there, thanks for watching Access TV. Subscribe, follow, like, and do all the good stuff. And make sure you leave a comment below. I don't know, just let us know what your favorite Access TV show is, or who your favorite bands are, and what artists you're into, or just say hi, man. I'd like to be told hi. We love hearing from you. That's the point, all right? Keep it coming.